from all his brothers and sisters. My son, for some reason, believed that there's nothing his father could fail to do. In his little mind, he thought his father was Superman. <laughs> I'm serious. You know, when a Java never found with the Java and the Melevita, Nafra Vata Kano no Kolechita, Alepita, the way the Kuro Nishetorichita, if you want your shoes, he goes and brings it. Without you telling him. He was so preoccupied with his father that I couldn't hold back anything from him. And then one day I would take him in the car. And he always stood, not sat, between his mother and myself. Now we go, 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 no, and I'm driving. He sat there for one reason. Somehow he believed his father was Superman. Mm. And you know, during those days, it was not common to have a Mercedes as a pastor. Mm. And I had the first one in Kitu as a pastor. So my son was into cars. So he would sit here and I would drive. And then, as a pastor, you don't drive fast so that you don't create a crisis. So the Toyotas are passing. You know, the dark sons are passing. And my son begins to mutter into my ears. Yapita Toyota, there he goes. Where is he going with this? Oh, my God, that's a Pachilla. Pachilla Bates. And I knew exactly what my son wanted. He says, then he says, but if daddy wants, he can pass all of them. Because he's driving a Mercedes. Daddy's fast, Manu. Daddy is fast. Nobody talks to me, I'm going to have a school at the moment. And he says it over. And before I know it, because he has praised me enough that I cannot disappoint him. I'm going to take that thing on my head. I'm going to take that thing on my head. I'm going to take that thing on my head. So that I don't disappoint my son. Yeah. How much more will your God put his foot on the pedal when he prays me? My God shall deliver me from all evil. My God shall never fail. Although I have no job, God shall create one for me. Every 
That disposition we have, which we teach our children, is not all over the world. It's on the African continent. Mm. In Africa, we, sorry for using the word, we actually worship authority. Mm. That's why politicians in Africa... But now we show good in the channel of Jamaica. But because to our team, the You know, I was invited to Swaziland again when I was in government to represent President Manawasa at a summit meeting. Now, Swaziland has a king, King Muswat. That's why you see how Africans honor their kings. Chao Mulo Pawesu. Now, today, Peter Soda Mamswati wants to have a punch. By the cause. By the cause. By the cause. And all the way through to the arena, they were all falling on the ground. It's a love. And people, Americans, think we are stupid. Our feet are stupid. No, 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 no. We are royalty. We understand royalty. We understand authority. We understand God. Oh God, thank you God. I pray in the name of Jesus. Oh Jesus, come down and heal us. Position until you 
<laughs> now, that is something very, very different that I'm teaching you today. Mm. If you are very proud, Kuma bosses your Kapaloko mm. David humbled himself before a totally ungodly king. Mm. So, why did he honor him? He goes there, he finds him in the cave, passing water, and he cuts part of his garment and runs away without killing him. And yet the king was looking for David. Mm. But David goes and cuts a piece and then goes on the mountain and says, Look, my Lord, I repent for having cut this from you. Forgive me. But if I wanted to kill you, I would have killed you. But you are the Lord's anointed. Mm. I can't touch you. Mm. Joseph served an Egyptian god and a king. Somebody who didn't even believe in his God. But he humbled himself and he was given the whole kingdom. Yeah. Why? He didn't go there to like Fatine, the Hebrew, I'm mean, a Pentecostal. I don't do any of that stuff. Uh -uh. He humbled himself not to the devil, but to authority. Yeah. I want to say this to you. That if you want to get anything in your life, you have to learn the subject of humility. Yeah. God has made us in his image to the extent that if we stroke his image, we stroke his image, God will react and respond according to what you have done. And I say this, even in the church, I want to go back to the church, the respect we have in the church. In fact, let me not say the church because the church in Nigeria or West Africa is very different from the church in Africa. In yeah, yeah. Look at me, everybody. Yeah. The church in West Africa is very different from the church in Central Africa. Mm. What is the difference? In West Africa, they respect the leaders. To the extent that God begins to bless them. But here, our poverty comes from the fact that we are so stubborn and we think that we are the bosses ourselves and the pastors are the same as us. I know all of you, you pastors, the reason why people don't honor you is that you don't honor those about you. Mm. So why do you want others to honor you when you don't honor those about you? Once in a while, I just buy a gift for somebody who is a minister of the gospel. I say, listen, I think you have done a lot for the kingdom. I just want to thank you. Humility is the gateway to what God has for you. Now listen before I conclude. What happens when you praise God is what I wanted to talk about. How does God respond to praise? In Matthew 20, 30, 34, when they called on Jesus, the blind man said, Jesus, thou son of David, the Bible said, Jesus stood still because of praise mm. and made him whole. In 2 Chronicles 25 to 7, Jehoshaphat won a war through praise. When the sons of Judah began to praise God in the war, all of a sudden, the Bible says, the more they praised God, the enemy began to kill themselves. Mm. You have enemies in your life. If you want them to be defeated and you praise God, they begin to kill each other. And yeah. an example after example. Praise means you put God where he belongs. Mm. You honor him. Mm. That's what I'm here today. I'm doing politics. But I want you to know that my strength comes from honoring God. Yes, sir. Wherever I'm going in politics will come from God, mm. not from man. I want you to know today that the reason I have taught on this subject is for us to understand that the ego thing we feel as human beings comes from God because we are created in the image of God. And if you scratch that ego, your hands become weak and you start to provide. Even if you're a husband. I'll never forget. Many years ago when I started to crusade as a young evangelist. Now this is for you pastors. All of you pastors, I want you to hear this. When I started having crusades as a young man, there's something I found out. People started to say, never has healing powers. But when I went to sleep, I knew where the powers was coming from. I trained my team, the Jesuit of Catalis, those of you that remember my first team. I trained them that when we go to a crusade, what is important is to make sure that God comes down. Mm. Listen to that. It is possible, nominally, to in a 
kutimwaisha because no more our change atmosphere ina change vile vya leo ni kifia kwa sababu hapo kuna kifia bana baka shule ba utuiko wala mko mna watu bale mtukira baki kuna let's all be will feel set by his presence so i said to my team i can't heal anybody and so if we don't bring god in the house then nothing is going to happen Mm. So in Mufulira, one of my first crusades, I had just been teaching my team about that. The Jester got the man from Jester Pastor Jester Katel, some of you know him. He was my first youth pastor who said uh, worship him. He began to lead the congregation in worship. And I gave him songs to sing. Songs that just glorify who God is. That without him, nothing would have been. It is because of him that we even walk and breathe. It's because of him that we are who we are. It's because of him that we are making. The moment you exalt him, ukumulu mule fiawa, chimu no kutila, apana bengala, Pastor Darius. Ero nikono zeti, Darius, Darius, na kwenye tatu for the first three times. The fourth time, I was like, eh? Ego tulefu ane sanchi tebe. The more we call him, the more we call until we are the new one of Casa Manishani. That's all we want from God. Yeah. Because we know how to call him. A church without God is a useless assembly of dying humans. Oh, yes, sir. Why do you come if you don't want God in the house? So just when we began to lead in worship, something began to happen. That's the first time in my young evangelistic life I felt the anointing in a way I had never felt. I had not preached a word. Worship was so deep. And the musician, the organist that I had, John Mulenda, up to this day, I believe he is, he has been the most anointed that he has ever produced. He's legendary. But when he never went to school that much, he couldn't read music, but when he sat in, in front of the organ, it's like the organ is speaking, speaking praises to God. Just to lift up the microphone, the power of God begins to flow. Just to begins to tremble because now the presence is so strong. John remains as the only one playing. All the musicians, the guitarists, fell backwards. They stopped playing the music. The only one who remained playing was John. And that sound, I still hear it today. I said, call on God's presence in a way that I've never heard. Jason was crying with the microphone until he began to shake to look for the preacher because I told them, don't give me the microphone to preach until his presence is in the house. Mm. That was his assignment. Don't you just say, hallelujah, kumamba, kumamba, our preacher, please be, ah, 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 bring it down. So that when I speak, I speak by the Lord. And when he wanted now with tears in eyes to turn around and give me the microphone, the preacher was on the floor crying, weeping, because I couldn't get up. I couldn't touch the microphone. The glory was in the house. Mm. Just to hold on for a while until his, the microphone was thrown out of his hands by some supernatural power and he fell on his face. Everybody began to fall on their faces. And then I started to hear something that changed my life. I started to hear cries from the people responding to Jesus without anybody making an altar call. They began to come to the front. Then I ended up saying, I can walk! I can walk! And in Hindu hall, Muslim, nobody preached. They began to walk. Somebody said, I can see! Oh my God, I couldn't see before. And I was knocked out. Nobody was preaching. But the glory had come down. Because we had scratched the ego of God. When you scratch his ego and he comes down, pastors, change is complicated when you want to do it on your own. Invite him. Your job will be easier. You preach shorter. And God will do more. But you must humble yourself. That's the vision I have for victory. The vision I have for victory. 
is that few people need to learn to allow the Holy Spirit. Okay. In fact, you don't even have to be a good preacher if the Holy Spirit is there. You don't even have to be a good preacher if the Holy Spirit is there. And therefore, today I submit to you, in my power, I can give you nothing. But with God's power, He can give you everything. Hallelujah. And that is what I want to say for Zambia. If Zambia is going to change, we must allow the power of God to move upon this nation. Mm. What we're going to do in the next few minutes is that I am going to ask you to bring anything broken to the altar. A broken heart, a broken family, a broken relationship, an ability where you cannot get married, a situation that has devastated you. It's complicated, you can't solve it. I want you to bring it to the altar. I don't want you to bring to the altar those things you can fix yourself. Mm. I just want those things you cannot fix. Yes. I want you to bring them here. And then we want to surround them with his presence and with his glory. As we start to minister to him, I believe God is going to show you things he has not shown you before. So tonight, today, I want to invite you. And I also want to bring Zambia here in its broken state. That as we now minister to the Lord, healing may start to flow through our land. His presence is what makes the difference. His presence is what church is all about. I hunger for His anointing. I hunger for His presence. I hunger for the anointing of God. More than anything else. Thank God for what He has given me. Thank God for my wife. Thank God for my five children. Thank God for the house I live in. Thank God for raising me in this nation as a leader at different levels to the level of vice president. I don't know where else I'm going to go. But I thank him. But beyond all that, all I want more than any of that is his presence. Yes, sir. If your presence can go with us, if your presence can go with us, it shall be worth it. Mm. And that's what I'm calling you to do. Call on his presence. Walk with God. Because if you do, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Yes, God will fight for you. Mm. Don't hunger just for food. Don't hunger just for things. Hunger for his presence. Yes. Yes, Lord. When something begins to hunger for God, Zambia will become the example of this continent. Mm. Because there's nothing that God is going to hold back from us. I don't come to church to impress somebody. I come here because I want Him. I want Him in my life. Yes. Because when He's in my life, no weapon that is formed against me. Mm. Yes. What I cannot do, you can do. Where I cannot reach, you can take me. A job I'm not qualified for, you can give me. A woman you, you are not worth marrying can marry you. Impossible things will begin to happen this morning. We need your presence. Yes, Lord. We need your presence. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit and free your Come Holy Spirit in the way that only you know how. We honor you because you are God. We honor you because beside you there is no other God. We honor you because you created the heavens and the earth. And every day shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus you are Lord. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We glorify your name. Heal this nation. Heal Zambia. Heal this land. Forgive us as a nation. Let your glory fill this house. I want the choir to begin to walk to the front. While Chris prepares to come and join me. 
But I want us to call him. He is the one who knows what we are going through. He's the one who knows the pain you feel. But I can't do anything for you except he counts himself. Come, Holy Spirit. We need you. Come, sweet spirit, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit, we need you. We need you of a sudden to be saved. We can't solve the problems of Zambia by just new policies. But when you come down in the midst of us, you shall heal our land. You say, my people, we shall call by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. Seek my face, turn away from their wicked ways. I will hear them from heaven. I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Come, Holy Spirit, we need you. We need you. We need you. Zambia needs you. Our homes need you. These lives need you. Holy Spirit of God. Where's Chris? We need you. We need you. Give him his own microphone if it's possible. We need you, Holy Ghost. Stand to your feet, lift those hands, and let him know that we hunger for his presence. We hunger for his presence. We shall sing song of worship and call on his name. And Chris, you just go ahead and obey the Lord as he leads you today. I feel his presence. Speak.
voice to answer your prayers. But I want you to listen to me. God wants to answer your prayers. But God is showing me that a lot of you don't know what you want. You first have to have a conversation with yourself. Convince yourself what you want from God. Then once you know what you want, then bring it to God. You can't come to the front wanting everything on, the, on earth. Focus is the word God gave me a few minutes ago. Focus on one thing you want today. Focus on it. So that when God is answering you, He will answer you by what you are presented to Him. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. And because you ask amiss. Some of you are just Christians, general Christians. You don't even remember anything God ever answered you about because you are not clear in your minds. I had to deal with that myself. When God asked me, never, what do you want me to do? I said, Lord, I want to take my faith. I want values of equality and justice and the love we preach in the church. I want it to be taken in politics so that politics can be influenced by the values of Christianity. I was clear and unclear about that. Some of you say, I'm doing two things, but I'm asking God to bring my faith into this arena where there is no faith. That's my only prayer to God. Because after that, Zambia shall be saved long after I'm gone. And our children will benefit from those godly values. And if your prayer request will touch more than you, God will give it to you. And I want you to be specific. And when you have anything specific as we worship, when you come to know what you want from God, and I want you to walk from where you are and come to the front. Only when you know what you want from God. When you do, then you start to walk to the front. We are going to give him praise. Call him who he is as people start to walk to the front before I pray. But before you come here, you've got to know what you want. Because if you don't know, your walk to the front will be a waste of time. So once you know, I invite you to come. Chris, bring us into his presence. <laughs> I
is no other God beside you. In fact, I've come to the front because I know you are the only one. You may wake up when this and you may be in danger. It's a nice and a good touch. If I'm a doctor, three days and I won't become a good. Whoever will be your good nature. Ni mama wa mbele tuna kwata. Leo tuna kwata ni mama wa mbele. Eto na ishira kutaji. Kwanza ni kusubira. Na ni kuchetekeva. Shire, 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 shire